um, the, the kits, both standard and metric. They're this is Mission Control Houston. Welcome to today's ISS update. It is Tuesday, September the 4th, 2012. This is a live view inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center. It has been an extremely busy holiday weekend for the team here in Mission Control and also the Expedition 32 crew on board the International Space Station as they get ready for yet another spacewalk that will take place tomorrow. Of course, last week, their crew, specifically Sonny Williams and Aki Hoshine, had a marathon spacewalk outside the International Space Station, clocking in at 8 hours and 17 minutes. The crew was attempting to install um, a, a brand new main bus switching unit. This is one of the big four boxes that's on the outside of the station that helps route power from the solar arrays to different parts of the station. They encountered some uh, trouble with a sticky bolt on the bottom side of the new unit. Uh, so that installation was called off and that device was temporarily stored uh, up there on its mounting location while the teams here in Houston uh, spent the entire weekend taking a look at what could be causing the issue with that bolt and also coming up with a plan for tomorrow's spacewalk. The crew will venture back outside tomorrow beginning at 6.15 a.m. Central Time, 7.15 a.m. Eastern Time. The spacewalk will last six and a half hours. The main focus of it is, of course, to get that main bus switching unit uh, installed back down on what's called a cold plate. That is where it is mounted. The uh, teams here in Houston did spend uh, several hours over the weekend taking a look at a, a model of that main bus switching unit and the bolt that's on the bottom of it. They came up with a plan for the crew to basically uh, do an extremely detailed cleaning job uh, on both the post where that bolt is going to be uh, driven into uh, and the bolt itself. Uh, Drew Foistel, uh, you see there in the photo, as well as Mike Fossum and Dave Wolf, all three of them veteran astronauts, uh, station uh, visitors as well, and uh, veteran spacewalkers uh, were there with the engineers coming up with a plan for the crew, uh, coming up with a choreography for what is to take place tomorrow. Uh, and they feel like they've got a, a good shot at uh, getting this main bus switching unit uh, actually installed tomorrow during the six and a half hour spacewalk. There is a bingo time uh, in the middle of the spacewalk at about the four hour mark that if the crew is not able to get this main bus switching unit installed by that point in time, they will begin the process of actually cleaning it up and moving it back inside the Quest airlock uh, where it will be taken back inside the station uh, for some more extensive uh, operation and uh, mechanics that will be done to that box if they cannot have uh, success by the four hour mark. If things go according to plan, as we talked about, the crew will have a series of uh, uh, handmade, uh, improv tools that they will be using, uh, sort of a toothbrush, a wire cleaner, some other items to clean out the post and the bolt uh, that will be driven down in there, into um, into the bottom side of that box and the station itself. Uh, they'll also be driving a brand new bolt if they need to. That will uh, hopefully clean up that area uh, and get that main bus switching unit uh, secured down to the station and back up and operational. So again, NASA TV coverage tomorrow at 5 a.m. Central Time, 6 a.m. Eastern Time. The spacewalk will begin at 6.15 a.m. Central Time, 7.15 a.m. Eastern Time here on NASA television. A couple of other issues uh, to talk to you about. On Saturday, uh, there was another error on board the International Space Station as what is called a direct current switching unit, or DCSU, Remote Bus Isolator, or RBI. Uh, suffered a trip. This is on one of the station's uh, solar arrays. Uh, there are four of those big giant wings outside the station. Each one of them has two channels assigned to it. Two of them have already been taken down, what's called the 1A and 1B, because of this main bus switching unit uh, issue. Uh, but another one on the 3A array, which is on the starboard uh, truss assembly, suffered a power trip. They do not know exactly what caused it. Uh, but it did shut off that uh, power channel as things got rerouted to other uh, parts of the station. So out of the eight channels of power on the International Space Station come from those big giant solar arrays, uh, three of them are uh, suffering some challenges right now as we speak. So they're taking a look at that uh, to figure out uh, exactly how that needs to be reset. And, of course, this is unrelated to the issue we've been talking about with the main bus switching unit. Also this morning... One of the uh, thermal valves inside the Tranquility Node, or Node 3 as we call it here at NASA, uh, did suffer a failure. They're taking a look at that. It is uh, stuck in the closed position, as they call it. Uh, but again, this is part of the cooling system inside Tranquility. And the uh, thermal experts here in Mission Control are taking a look at that to figure out exactly how they can get it opened back up.
The uh, crew today has half of an off-duty day, which this is uh, standard and traditional anytime they're getting ready to do a spacewalk the next day. Uh, so uh, they've been extremely busy over the weekend getting these tools ready to go for tomorrow's activities. Both uh, Joe Acaba and Aki Hoshide have what's called a robot session where they will just practice uh, the maneuvers that will take place tomorrow as uh, Hoshide once again gets on the end of the station's arm to position himself uh, sort of at the top and the bottom side uh, of this main bus switching unit so he has a little bit easier access. So he'll be on the end of the arm while Joe Acaba uh, helps fly it along with some ground commanding that'll be done. So they're running through that. Uh, the uh, U.S. crew members also have a procedure review coming up here shortly where they will take a look at uh, the extensive procedures that were written for them over the weekend by the spacewalk team. Of course, the spacewalk officer, Keith Johnson, uh, who was on console last week, uh, he'll be on again tomorrow. He and his team have been busy uh, writing a script and the choreography for tomorrow's activities that was sent up to the crew uh, earlier. So they're going to be looking at that and uh, getting ready to go. And then uh, Sunny and Aki are finishing up the tool configurations for tomorrow as well. They really are uh, putting together several different tools that will be used tomorrow, including a toothbrush, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a red toothbrush that they uh, have put some tape around on the end, a sort of a wand that will be used to clean uh, the post and the uh, bolt itself. They also have a wire cleaner. It looks just like it does here on Earth that they have uh, mocked up. And they'll be uh, using that to hopefully uh, solve this issue that we saw. So the first step in the spacewalk tomorrow will be uh, to remove the MBSU from the cold plate that it is currently sitting on. It was temporarily tied down uh, with a tether at the end of the spacewalk last week when it became clear that uh, it was not going to be successful in terms of uh, bolting it down. You're seeing uh, a graphic here of the green side on the left side. That is the MBSU number one on the truss itself. That, uh, handhold uh, piece of metal there that's on the right hand side that is what that MBSU is currently tied onto with that uh, strap you see there indicated in red so they're going to remove it with what's called a torque multiplier uh, if you watched the spacewalk last week you saw uh, the silver pistol grip tool which is uh, basically the astronauts drill that they use uh, there's a torque multiplier that they put on the end of it that they will use to actually unbolt uh, this big box which weighs about 220 pounds from the cold plate so they'll take a look at it. You see uh, the actual picture of it there. They'll take a look at it, inspect it. They'll lubricate uh, the actual post, which is on the cold plate itself. That's what the bolt goes into. Uh, there's two different ones of those. One's called H1, one's called H2. You see the one on the left and H2 there on the right. Uh, so they will lubricate H1, clean the H2 post, which is where they saw some of the issues, uh, with a wire brush. They'll lubricate it, basically put some grease on it with a toothbrush and then they will thread in uh, a brand new bolt to hopefully clean out the threads that are inside there. This that you see right there is the actual bottom side of the MBSU itself, that uh, large, what looks like a, a funnel or a, a siphon, whatever it may be. Uh, that's just called a fine alignment guide. That actually helps the bolt go into the post itself uh, because obviously it's on the bottom. Uh, the astronauts can't to get up under there and take a look at it, so they need some uh, physical and, and visual guides to help uh, bolt that entire box down. But you see the screw there in the middle. Copy. So they've got another uh, Acme bolt that they will try that they've scavenged from another location. And then they will uh, try a few different techniques, uh, sort of rocking the box back and forth and also uh, increasing the torque step by step, which is very similar to what they did uh, last week to see uh, if any of these techniques do work. So again, there's a four-hour bingo time in the middle of the spacewalk that if this box is not installed by that point in time, uh, they will switch tactics and begin the process of moving it back inside the Questar lock for uh, further action. In addition to the spacewalk choreography, the team has also come up with what's called a crib sheet, which is typical of any spacewalk. Basically, it's a if-then document, meaning that if this happens or if this doesn't work, then they uh, try the, all these different techniques that are already uh, prescribed out for them. Uh, this document for tomorrow is about 15 pages long, so these uh, teams here on the ground in Houston have uh, gone through pretty much any imaginable scenario uh, that uh, the two crew members could face tomorrow and have uh, some really good instructions on what the crew needs to do to uh, tackle those issues if they do present themselves. But again, the spacewalk is due to last six and a half hours. There's a four-hour mark in the middle of it that uh, that is sort of our 
uh, line in the sand, for lack of a better word, that uh, if this box is not uh, installed by that point in time, they'll call it off and move it inside the Quest Star Lock and move on to some other some other items. So again, 5 o'clock a.m. Central Time is when our spacewalk coverage will begin. 6 a.m. Eastern Time, the spacewalk itself will begin at 6.15 a.m. Central Time, uh, 7.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and uh, it'll last about six and a half hours.